Hello everyone and welcome to the Future Self podcast. My name is Sachini Pagoda and I'm a Bachelor of Genetics, Arts graduate and current, almost former grad of Honours in English Literature here at the Australian National University. In simpler terms, I studied molecular genetics and English for four years and this past year I zoned in on literature to pursue my dream of writing a novel. Today, I am so excited to talk with Jessie Tu, author of acclaimed novel, A Lonely Girl is a Dangerous Thing. This fiction explores race, sex, desire and loneliness through a snapshot into the life of former child prodigy, Jenna Lin. And I have not been able to stop thinking about it since I read it a few months ago. So welcome, Jessie. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. That's really good to hear. Um, I'll launch right into the first question. So I've read in previous interviews that for you, writing is like breathing, but you took a few different career paths before becoming a writer, like you studied classical violin and law. So I wondered, when did you first realise that you wanted to become a writer? And is A Lonely Girl is a Dangerous Thing what you envisioned your first novel to be back then? Um, I think I've always been a writer in the sense that it was just always something that I did for myself. Um, I think you can call yourself a writer regardless of whether or not you are, you know, you're being remunerated financially for it. Um, I guess it was only in the last 12 months or so that I have been able to call myself like officially a writer in the sense that, you know, I'm being paid, um, to write. I mean, my day job is as a journalist for Women's Agenda. But yeah, I guess like I've always seen myself as a writer because I like I'm a very fanatic diary keeper and I've always written there. Like I'm very much like inspired by Helen Garner's routine of writing and keeping a journal. Um, and I guess, yeah, um, the, the book came out rather organically and very rapidly as well. Um, I guess if I had to fantasize about the best way in which a book comes together, it would have been how it has come together. So I'm very fortunate in that. Wow. It's received such a great reception. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. That's really, really cool to hear. <laughs> so I found your book an incredibly interesting read. Um, I particularly love the depiction of this young Taiwanese Australian woman living a life that wasn't defined by her race, but also her race wasn't erased completely, which is so important in fiction, given the lack of portrayal of Asian women and imperfect Asian women in particular. Yeah. And there was elements that as a child of a South Asian immigrant myself, like I found I could relate to. So the withdrawn communication style between Jenna and her parents and the fetishization that occurs towards Jenna from some of the men in the novel. Yeah. But at the same time, Jenna's experience in the world wasn't completely centered around her Taiwanese descent, which I really appreciated, like there was more to her. Mm -hmm. So I'm also attempting to write a novel with a protagonist of color. And I just wondered what your experience doing so was like. Was it a natural process, like writing parts of yourself into the novel, or was it a more conscious decision-making process? Um, totally the former. It's I've only ever written from my own lens, I suppose. Like I, and and I think the strongest writing that I find myself being drawn to naturally has been one from the first person. And when I write stuff, I don't really think about whether or not I show up on the page. I just write what I feel like is interesting and true. And like some people can credit it as you know stuff that can be attributed to me personally but I don't think that really like those questions of whether or not you know um the character has elements of me in it is so uninteresting to me like I don't I really don't care like me as a writer is a, I'm only interesting in the sense that I have constructed this book but like other than that um people should not be interested in me as a person like they should just try and engage with the work on its own terms and its own merit um but yeah no it came very naturally like I'm sure when, the way you approach your writing you know you want I guess I thought like 
well, I have never seen a character like myself and you write what you don't know and what you want and what you want the world to be. And so I wanted the world where there were more Asian female characters in the Western canon. Yeah, I totally agree. It's funny. It's that old adage of like, write what you know, but maybe not quite write yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 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 And a bit of a interesting question, I guess. I wondered, because I sometimes do when I'm writing characters of colour, did you wonder if there was a potential to alienate readers by including some aspects of Jenna's lived experience as an Asian Australian woman? And I guess, does that even matter? Um, No, it doesn't. And it shouldn't matter. Like, uh, I guess it depends on who you're trying to impress. When I write, I'm trying to impress nobody but myself. Yeah. (laughs) I guess it's a very privileged position I'm in. If I had like other stakes, it'll be different. But um, this is my debut novel. Nobody knows me, you know, like I have no, I'm not privy or I'm not under, like I'm not under the thumb of anyone. And so I just write what I want to write. Yeah. And like be true to what I think is good. Yeah. Yeah. So in that, like when you went into the editing process with the book, was there anything that your editor said, you have to cut this? I don't like oh I think I had like several cuts yeah I had like all up um, just under 20 edits for this novel um so yeah the book was way longer um so my my editor is a genius um so she was able to cut a lot from it but like um you know the the cut version is obviously like much I'd say like a stronger ended up being a stronger book okay yeah same thing kill your darlings (laughs) Yeah. Um, So the next question is, your novel has done incredibly well. Congratulations. And looking back, what do you think were the most important forks in the road or career decisions that you made that helped you get to where you are now? I don't know if it was a career decision, but it really came a point at around 2016 or 17 where I had these two amazing um friends who are much older than me who sat down and had a conversation with me um in the context of like um work like we were, they're both teachers and I was a teacher at that point and they kind of casually said you know you can actually do this like you're actually very good at writing like don't hide it from the world like at that point I guess I was still in my 20s and they were very much like you know, when you don't see your own worth or value, so you sometimes need someone else to tell you that. So they were these two women who really just said, hey, you know, what you what you can offer is actually very good. Um, so just go ahead and, like, sort of believe in yourself. And I think that was really, really important for me at that point in my life to, to sort of um, compel myself to believe that what I – what I have or what I want is worthy I guess enough yeah so from there did you decide to pursue writing more seriously and yeah I think I started like um like entering a lot of competitions yeah and like showing people my work because I think um like a lot of people are fantastic writers it's just they don't feel like they have the confidence like that for whatever reason they don't feel like they have the confidence to show other people or to say hey this is great and then send it out to the world Um, which is a shame because like there's a lot of shitty writing out there right like so many bad books are being published but (laughs) it's like people those people have just like happened to have you know um people who thought that it was important there's always going to be people who hate or love your work you know yeah yeah I could talk about that for ages, but I'm going to move on. <laughs> um, what would you put the huge success of your novel down to? Do you think luck was much of a factor or were there things you proactively did to contribute to its success? Um, probably a great team at Allen and Unwin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the publishing house who um, backed my book. Yeah. Um, and my agent, I guess, I guess I would put it down to really, really supportive people mm-hmm. um, who believed in the work. 
And so uh, I wouldn't go far as, I, I wouldn't say luck, although there's a element of luck in everything that we do. I mean, it's lucky that you and I were even born, you know, if you want to take it to that extent. Um, but yeah, supportive people who believe in the work is really what has made this book. So um, that, that has made this book on a lot of people's reading list. Yeah, I have to confess, it was the cover that got me. So I was like, that's a beautiful cover. <laughs> so I picked it up. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like luck, I suppose, you know. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Um, so if you could give your past young writer self a piece of advice, what would it be? Would it be to just believe in yourself more? or It would be to, um, I love this question um, because I always want to think about, you know, how I would have changed my past. Because I, I feel like um, I would probably have written this book like way earlier if I <laughs> if I didn't have so much self doubt. Um, I'd say I would tell myself um, just do your own thing. Like don't try and pander to other people. Yeah, yeah, that's my great. I think that would be such great advice if I could give my younger self. Like don't try and like genuflect to other anyone else. Just do your own thing. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. <laughs> um, so you actually mentioned, um, and I've heard that publishing is all about who you know. So building up a portfolio, getting your name out there, publishing freelance articles, entering competitions. Um, do you have any advice for me on how to do this effectively, aside from just sending out 100 pitches and crossing my fingers? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I guess figure out what kind of stuff you want to write about, like whether or not you want to write long form articles or poetry or short stories, um, figure out how, like your thing, your little thing, like, um, and what kind of publications you want your name to be attached to. I think that would be like a really important first step um, and be very intentional about where you place your work. So like, obviously I think I would say to do your research. So like, don't go sending, aggravated like op-ed to a publication that you know just won't publish you know um, a very strong polemic or something like just be very careful about and deliberate and intentional about what kind of publication you pitch to I'd yeah. say yeah because so, you only have a limited number of time in a day right yeah so you got to be very resourceful yeah so I guess um along with that how do you deal with the rejection that inev inevitably comes from that process? You keep doing it. Yeah, <laughs> just growing. Yeah. Well, I don't. Yeah, I I don't see it as rejection. I see it as um, just part of what you do. It's just like um, timing, right? For me, um, I don't see it as someone saying no. Even though it is like someone saying no, we won't take your work. It's just like okay what's next I guess it's like a way of just um deflecting lost energy into other areas of your life yeah yeah making it productive. Yeah, yeah yeah okay so the first draft of my novel is already done cool what advice do you have for me about polishing it up and getting it published eventually <laughs> um I would say leave it in the drawer for like two or three months okay and then come back to it with fresh eyes, read as much as you can, um, read like your favourite books and work out what kind of um, sort of writer you would like to sound like, I think, like read writers that you find yourself drawn to um, and, then, um, and then do like several other new edits, I'd say. And then once you're happy with like maybe after two or three other next edits, um, I would say like, approach an agent maybe or maybe just send it to a publishing house and just see what happens yeah and see what happens yeah totally I feel like there's so much great like um publishing houses these days that are still receiving unsolicited manuscripts you know yeah, yeah. um yeah I'm sure it'll be like people if it's like a a, a character who is a non-white person like a protagonist I think a lot of people are yearning for those stories mm. Yeah, totally. Um, 
And you mentioned before that you really are grateful towards your literary agent and publishing team. So yeah. that's definitely something you would be recommending to, I guess, future writers to try and also get for themselves. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and also speak to anyone who's in the industry, you know, yeah. like reach out to them and like just like send emails or like ask them out for coffee. Like I've always been doing that. I've yeah. always asked random people on like online because it's so easy to connect with people these days yeah yeah Um, and everyone's really friendly like learn from people people are always willing to share advice you know yeah okay so it's a friendly community and I shouldn't be scared of it (laughs) not at all yeah yeah it was very small community as well so yeah yeah oh that's nice (laughs) um oh and a bit more of a topical question I guess given the the days we're in um, what do your days as a writer usually look like and how have they changed due to COVID-19? Um, so for most of the day, I work on a couple of pieces for my day job, which is as a journalist for Women's Agenda. Mm-hmm. I work from home and I've been working from home since like end of last year um, because I've been able to. So that's been really fortuitous. Um, and I guess like I try and spend a couple of hours every day working on my next novel and also um, read, keep up with my reviews. So I got a job as like a emerging book critic with The Age and SMH a few months ago. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, it's great. I, I think it's literally the best job in the world yeah. <laughs> to like be paid to engage with a work of like a work of literature is yeah. a dream. Yeah, such a dream. Yeah, okay. So do you find um, working from home uh, really productive way to work do you have any tips for me on how to really yeah I mean it depends um how you um what kind of person you are you know I am very introverted um I love working from home (laughs) like it's it's a dream because I hate commuting (laughs) um but I think I'm an intense um fitness fanatic and so like every day I at least go out for a run or like a fitness class I think it's important to to keep your body really healthy because you know it serves what you want to do like you and I our jobs is so solitary is that the word solidarity yeah like it's so yeah it's sedentary maybe that's it that's the word <laughs> I was for. yeah sedentary it's we just sit and like write you know it's so we don't move around so it's important that we also like move our bodies around as well yeah yeah and then that also kind of I find it gives me like like my subconscious time to work (laughs) if I'm really stuck on something yeah 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 yeah. um yeah well so just before we wrap up I would love to know what your next project is about you mentioned a next novel I don't know how much you can share but I would love to know what it's about and when we can expect to see it okay (laughs) Um, (laughs) I I'm still working on I think I just finished the second draft of it um and it's basically about um like I always, ha- I've always been obsessed with art, like visual art, right? And I've been thinking a lot about like my relationship to white people and whiteness. Mm-hmm. I realized recently that um, I still carry a lot of shame about having pandered to white people my whole life. Mm-hmm. And a few years ago, there was this one relationship with a man who, um, who was a white guy. And um, I was really, really like the way I behaved in that relationship was so um, like, I'm still paralyzed with shame when I think about um, the sort of love and attention that I gave him that was completely unreciprocated. Mm -hmm. And like the book is not really about that guy, um, but the emotional essence is about, so it's from the perspective of a woman, an Asian woman um, who is looking back on her life um, and reflecting on this relationship she had in her early 20s with a white man. And really it's an, like a, a narrative assessment on what it means to look, you know? Like I feel like my whole life um, white people have been the centre of my attention. Yeah. And I'm just so like it's still conflicting for me. It really yeah. is such a conflicting thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the book is about that. <laughs> That's so interesting. I'm, yeah, I'm so, so excited to read what, what you've done with that and all those emotions yeah cool (laughs) yeah no I and like I just um I actually just pitched a piece to a uh, online publication about 
always loving or not loving, but like thinking that white people were really beautiful. And then I grew up and I was like, wow, that's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now I'm in university and people are like, tick this box to tell us that you're a different ethnicity. Like it's really kind of almost trendy to be a different ethnicity and it's weird. <laughs> I know, I know that, right? People exoticize you. Yeah. I get that too, yeah. Yeah, so. I have no idea actually. I haven't even shown it to my agent, so. Okay, yeah. <laughs> who knows? Hopefully soon. <laughs> um, so just to, just to read out a concluding statement, Thank you, Jesse, for taking the time today to share your wisdom and advice about the world of being a novelist and a writer. Um, it's really inspirational to talk to someone who is so passionate about what they do and is doing what I want to be doing someday. Definitely gives me hope and a little bit of direction in a field that I think is often mysterious and a bit daunting. So thanks so much. Oh, you're so welcome and good luck with everything. I can't wait to read your novel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good kind of pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. This is Ivana Ho. I'm the producer of Future Self, and I'm here with Sacchini, who has just finished interviewing Jessie Tu, author of A Lonely Girl is a Dangerous Thing, which I understand you really enjoyed. Um, so I'm curious, um, we were talking before you started talking to Jessie and you mentioned that the novel that you're working on slash have finished the first draft of is a different genre to that of Jessie's, but you felt that you would find it valuable talking to Jessie nevertheless. Can you describe why that was the case? Yeah, so um, as you would have heard in the interview, um, I asked Jessie a lot about her writing of a protagonist of colour and also just her experience being an Asian Australian woman and how that had impacted her work. And that's something that my novel has in common. Um, so I guess there's always complexities with writing a person of colour and wondering how much of that their experience should surround the fact that they are a different race. Um, especially when you're in a genre like contemporary or realism because it really affects your life and world experience. Um, the other reason I really wanted to talk to her is because I'm curious about how brilliant minds put together stories and how she found herself where she was and, of course, just the general commonality of the fact that she'd written a novel and I wanted to know about the process of that and how she found herself there. And, yeah, I guess there's only so many ways you can write a novel <laughs> and I thought it would be helpful to, to learn how she got there. And when did you start writing your novel? I started writing it at the beginning of this year actually as part of my honours. So I did an honours in creative writing which means that instead of a whole research-based thesis mine was 50% research-based to 50% creative and so the goal was to write a novel and then submit a portion of that towards my thesis. So my goal for the year was to write the novel and then take out chunks and put it towards my honours thesis. So I finished it back in May, um, but then of course my thesis was due two weeks ago. So since then I've kind of become, kind of got caught up in writing that instead of revisiting the actual fiction work. I was going to say, like, that would be just so daunting having to write a whole novel in the course of a year. And then I hear you say that you finished it in May, which means that you spent like, it took you like four months. It didn't take me long to write the first draft. Um, I think when I had the ideas and I wrote it all down and I kind of blocked out chapter by chapter what I wanted to happen. Um, and then lockdown happened. So that's what I did every day. I sat down and I finished like three chapters every day. So um, yeah, it came out of my brain quite quickly, I guess. And can you tell us a little bit about what your novel is about? Yes, so a little bit of context. When I was 13, 14, I got really obsessed with like young adult dystopian novels. So like The Hunger Games, Divergent, Uglies, all of those books. But I got really frustrated about how the more you read, the more they're all the same. And they have really weak female characters and no characters of colour. And I just thought, nah, screw it. I'm going to write my own. So that's what I've done. So it's a YA dystopia 
but I like to think that it's complex in its characters and in its story arc and it's surprising and it's set in a world where a disease has ravaged the world. I came up with it before COVID, I promise. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, it's written from the point of view of a girl who's in law enforcement and it's her job to like keep this disease at bay so that's kind of what it's about that sounds really cool and yeah very prescient (laughs) yeah yeah Mm. well all the best with getting it published and with the polishing process thank you and yeah thanks so much for being on future self and doing an excellent interview thanks for having me (laughs) 